All right, guys, what's going on? Thank you for joining me for this one. We are starting this video out not very exciting with a little bit of band warm up. And this is the warm up I've been doing, part of the warm up I've been doing before, is it every training session, including legs? Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Maybe I'll take the day off it tomorrow, but that's what I was doing every time I was in the gym and basically every day since physical therapy. And since those band exercises, I was prescribed uh, the Turkish get ups, a band press, the one arm dumbbell press pushing off the wall. And my physical therapist definitely gave me a few things that I needed to be doing. So I've incorporated those post-workout and as exercises stand alone in the workout. And I'll probably continue to try to progress on them con continuously, I don't know, maybe for the rest of the year or something like that until I feel pretty confident and comfortable about where my injuries are at and where the healing process is going. So the good thing is, is I'm still able to do my vertical pulls and now I'm doing horizontal pulls as well. I was very scared to do these in physical therapy last Monday. It's been like 10 days since I've done barbell rows, but it just felt so sketchy and my therapist felt confident in my ability to do them, but I knew that it was really, really pushing it. So I wanted to push and do some dumbbell press and really focus on what I wanted to do and pulling was something I could let wait. So I've let my rotator cuff heal enough since that week and a half ago PT session and I've incorporated a lot of things on my push day and I'm really pushing legs as well. So I'm feeling like I'm pretty good on my recovery. I could be lifting heavier and training for more strength, but for now it's just focusing on what I can do and doing it to the best of my ability. And so let's touch on that on these barbell rows. So. I guess you can call these a pen lay row, but my problem with rowing is I never really know what angle to have my knee at. So if this is the view from the side, sometimes I end up at like a 45 degree angle and it doesn't really let me clear my knees with the barbell. So as you can see here, if you watch, I'm doing okay here at the end, but I start with way more bend in my knee than I finish. So that was me trying to fix it and it's not gonna happen with the barbell that close to my body. So on this set, I let the barbell unintuitively, because I never do this, I let the barbell roll away from me just a little bit. And when I let the bar roll away from my shins, it was easier to clear my knees because I was no longer pulling and then hitting my knees. I was starting away from them and just pulling past them into my waistband. So I don't recommend ever letting the bar get away from you when you're doing a pull or a deadlift or anything. but when you're relearning a movement and you have a lot of pull into your shins and lean back ingrained into you from deadlifting, those movement patterns, those cues, this is more of like a stiff leg -like deadlift or a much, much weaker type of position where you're gonna train your muscles and your posterior chain slightly differently. So here I'm still trying to work on where to put my legs. Uh, you're still seeing my glutes do a lot of work and I wanna try to eliminate that. So this is only getting to 100 pounds right now we ended up going to 110 pounds which is pretty cool but not setting any strength records but it's really the form and the volume that i can work with right now so here here is exactly where you want to be so my knee hip whatever my knee joint is more at like a 75 80 degree angle sometimes i was at 45 and my knees would be in the way and i'd only feel it in like my lower back maybe lower lats if i'm lucky but here, having the barbell away from me, I'm able to pull in a straight line towards my waistband. And I've never done that before without bumping my knees or having to like bow or flare my legs open to clear my knees. You don't have to do that when you do a more stiff leg approach. So just be careful, cut your weight in half or warm up and try to do this type of technique, but never roll the bar away from you and put your back in a more bent over position and be like, oh, let me see what I can do. That's a new pattern you should learn. So if you get hurt doing that, it's you probably had an injury coming because it's very simple to lower the weight and try a new form without just expecting that you'll be able to do it. So after those rows, um, we did some shrugs, three sets, and then got into the seated row. I wanted to do the seated row with two individual handles because I felt like that would be best. So I'll revisit that machine or that seated row without such a bad camera angle and I'll show you guys the pulling with two hands because I don't recommend rowing 
ever unless it's like a free cable or a very very free motion and machines don't allow for that smith machine doesn't allow for that even the barbell doesn't allow for it that well and i find the dumbbell is probably the worst because it's so big it gets in your way and i think people get injured trying to work with the dumbbell on the rows especially big dumbbells because they're just too bulky they can't clear your rib cage they can't clear, can't clear your hip they can't clear your gut sometimes your tricep can't clear your lat if you're big so honestly, I don't understand why the dumbbell row is even a thing. I think it's probably one of the worst exercises I've ever tried, but that's probably just for some reason with the shape or length of my arms and torso. Probably doesn't really work together. So the bread and butter of this workout, what I'm gonna improve on is lat pull downs, but I wanna get to chin ups. Barbell rows, I wanna obviously get heavier. Dumbbell shrugs, I'd like to get to barbell shrugs and then deadlifting. And the seated row is good. That's something we can improve on from now on. So upwards with the seated row. I just gotta track my weights and make sure. I think it was 90 pounds and 105 pounds were my top set. So we'll go with 105, 90 for sure. And I'll just take it from there. I've got it written here. So I'm gonna try to keep track as best as I can. And um, like I was touching on in other videos, because I'm slowly increasing my compound movements, I can't really add that much. I'm still training my um, lagging, my whatever, my limbs, my arms my non back and chest muscles um, I'm doing all my accessory and isolation work after and I'm doing a lot more of it because normally I would spend an hour doing compound movements and now I'm spending maybe 20 to 40 minutes so that doesn't leave me with a lot of workload done and it doesn't leave me feeling very accomplished I'm not going to progress so although these isolation movements get a really bad rap um, I did like two or three sets of curls and overhead extensions with a rest pause set at the end and that's what I'm getting into now. Rest pause is something that was popularized with the dog crap method of training. I think it's Dante Trudell or someone related to him. Um, and in the dog crap training methodology, I think they introduced rest pause, which is kind of just like going to failure and resting 10 to 30 seconds instead of taking a break from the entire set. And the reason and the idea behind that is to work the muscle when I guess you could say they're fatigued enough to start being fully recruited and stimulated. So muscle fiber recruitment is one of the main slash the main, uh, it's super, super important when it comes to building muscle, recruiting every fiber in your actual muscle belly that makes up the muscle. And you're going to do that by doing a full range of motion and by going to failure or working with it a very, very heavy load. Obviously here we're not working with heavy loads. We need to get to the end of the set. The end of the set, the last few reps, whether it's eight reps, 12 reps, when you're close to failure and you approach failure with those few reps, those few reps are best for stimulating muscle growth. Okay, so the reason you wanna rest pause is to get to that state where you're fully fatigued, get a little bit of rest, and then begin when you can do half the reps, maybe four or five reps, so you finish your set's working in that end portion of the pre-fatigued uh, set, but you're not pre-exhausting and using a lighter weight. You're just extending a set with the same weight. So instead of doing 12 reps and being done, you pick them back up, do six, do three. You just did 19 quality reps. So that's a little advice for you guys. If you guys are still trying to try some new methods, dog crap training, rest pause, it's a good way to add intensity and not a lot of time. So that's what I'll be doing. Peace. Pretty solid. Three. Sets on the right arm, three sets on the left. And uh, interesting. Fluff mode. Shoulder feels good, but still healing, still recovering. Good workout. All right, guys and girls, we're gonna do something I've been procrastinating on. I'm gonna not edit it very much. I'm just gonna spend five or 10 minutes to close this video out answering questions. I've picked a starting point Wait for it. And I will begin reading from this screen where I started making videos again and upwards. So let's go through a few questions and see if anything interesting pops up. I will try to not skip very much. Just find something interesting, random, could be troll, could be beneficial. All right, so first one, have you ever used PEG MGF? Um, whether I've used it or not isn't really uh, that important. What is important is that I'm versed in what you do with it and why you would use it as a person interested in peptides. So mechano growth factor is just that a growth factor, kind of like insulin like growth factor. <clears throat> and I believe what mechano growth factor does in the research that I've done when I came across it is that it's localized post trauma, post stress, post training 
in the area you trained. So let's say you train biceps after your workout or after the resistance when you begin, when, I don't even know if when you begin recovery, just after you put the muscle under stress, these mechano growth factors I believe are present in high concentrations to do whatever they're supposed to do. So I found that out and realized, okay, this MGF is some sort of post-workout booster for growth factors in your muscle tissue that you train. And PEG MGF, I believe, is a long-acting version of it. So based on what I just said about how it's present after training, I don't know why you'd want to have it all the time. It sounds good, good in theory, but that could also be really bad, and, or I don't know. So um, not something I recommend, not something I think people get results with. And if it is real and you're using it, it uh, how do you even know it's safe? So fully peaking back development, yes. Um, before I had to stop because of my rotator cuff, I was doing heavy-weighted chins and everything was going really well. So. I don't know guys, what do you think? Um, I'll hopefully get to the comments soon. For all of you that have been training five plus years or even 10 plus years, if you take a month off, do you lose muscle? Or do you recover? Do you feel healthier? Do you, do you get stronger? What happens when you take four weeks off for you guys or three to five weeks off or something like that? I'd love to think that I didn't lose any muscle. I'm 207 pounds this morning and I'm a little fatter, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you lose muscle in a few weeks after training for a decade? Hopefully not. Congratulations on your acceptance, brother. You're going to ACE PT school. Yeah, guys, I got into physical therapy school and it's uh, one of the biggest accomplishments of my life. So there's some things I need to do on uh, with my life and with a lot of things before I start school. But I'm glad that I took time from doing YouTube and studied for the GRE and prepared for well, everything it took to get into physical therapy school, it was really crazy. I applied to 11 schools and I visited five colleges and I'm going to one in a couple days actually. So this is why I didn't film because now, just now thinking about it, I'm getting distracted like it's too much to do. So we'll wrap it up here. I did get into Washington University in St. Louis. Hang on a sec. So there's the Washi one, New York Medical College and the George Washington University. I'm waitlisted some other places, but this one is going to be uh, where I end up, so it's been quite a roller coaster ride. And if you guys do have serious questions about that, you can always message me on Instagram or email me. And there was two or three people I reached out to for help with what to do for the GRE and what score is decent. And uh, I don't don't you know DM me asking me what I got, but DM me and ask me what you should shoot for and what would be best and what I maybe then I'll tell you you know how I did it and. Uh, took a lot of tutoring, but it got me a job as a tutor. So it's funny how things work, but uh, I'll wrap it up there. I'm rambling. Peace.